19th. Okay, so we have the moon in Scorpio going void, of course, at 12.20 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're locking into Sagittarius energy at 12.32. So not a very long window where the moon is void, which is going to work in our favor. Because, of course, when the moon is void, things are shaky, things are unstable, things are uncertain. And I think we've all had enough of that particular energy. This is also the last day of Gemini season. So as the sun nears the final degrees of Gemini, we are going to feel that intensity, that head pressure, that urgency in order to figure things out. If you need to go back and listen to what we were supposed to be learning through Gemini season, definitely go ahead, take a look back, a little bit of a refresher, a review. But we will be moving into Cancer energy. And of course, we're all very, very much already in the solstice portal. We are going to feel this rush of energy, this urgency, this pressure as the sun kind of sits in those final degrees. And at the same time, we're also going to experience time slowing down. We have reached the absolute expansion point that we could possibly reach. And as the solstice kind of sucks us into this window and we lock into this new karmic chapter that we're going to be exploring from now until the fall, we kind of just pause. Now, many of us do not enjoy the pause, although you have to learn to enjoy the pause because we are about to be kind of thrown catapulted, if you will, into a brand new territory. So this, you know, peak expansion point is kind of, you know, the point in time where if we were to stretch out a rubber band to as far as it would go, we're going to hold it as far as it could actually expand. And then we're going to release that particular elastic band. And you know how fast that elastic band can actually retract. That's where we're at. That's the energy that we're sitting in. Is it going to feel good? No, probably not. We are going to have to have a couple of days to adjust to this particular energy. However, we're not there yet. We are coming to a realization. We're coming to a completion point, coming to a finality point with a lot of the, let's call it options, choice, paths, and directions that we were currently trying to debate between throughout the Gemini season. There's a lot more clarity coming into us now. And just so that you're aware, that clarity is coming in a harsh reality check. You may not like the information, the details, the options that you're currently being faced with, but nonetheless, you know where it is that you stand more now than ever, especially in comparison to where it is that you thought you were going to be at the end of this Gemini energy. So with all of that being said, there are 13 different aspects popping off here today. 11 of them are going to involve the moon in an interesting turn of events. The two aspects that are not involving the moon involve Mercury. Now, Mercury is about to give up his rulership here in Gemini energy. So there's going to be an intensity for those particular interactions as well. The moon in this Scorpio energy, going to sit across from directly oppose Uranus, the great awakener in Taurus energy. Scorpio and Taurus, they sit across from each other in the Zodiac wheel. And because of this opposition, we are definitely at a tension point. And opposition gives us an opportunity to see where it is. That tension, conflict, struggle, challenge, definitely pressurizing us to make a change. This is essentially a growing point. But at this particular juncture, usually Uranus brings us a certain amount of clarity. At this particular point in time, we have the clarity that we need. We may not like it. And because of that, we're trying to make sense of it in a way that is more favorable, which of course is not rooted in reality. It is definitely pushing us into the realm of confusion where we are creating more confusion than there actually needs to be because the choices, the option, the clarity that we've just been given is not what we wanted. The moon then goes ahead, makes a positive interaction with Venus. Venus being the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money. Now in this cancer energy, she's all up in her feels. She's trying to figure out where it is that she needs to go from here, what it is that she needs to do. The focus is on realizing where it is that we do not feel safe, secure, stable in our physical realms, especially with particular relationships. Having this particular realization is putting us in a situation to figure out what it is that we can do to build a foundation of all the things that we're currently lacking. 
The moon interacting with Venus in this way is empowering us to see that a major change, a major transformation in our inner realm of our thoughts, of our emotions is definitely pushing for us to make major changes in our external realm. The moon is then going to make an interaction with the north node in Aries energy. This is putting us on a little bit of a situation, a circumstance to realize where it is that we do see the opportunity to make some moves, to take action, if you will. But what we're kind of being offered at this time is an opportunity to break away from the path in which we've been walking. And although that is the right thing to do, and although that is something that we need to do, we may not feel well equipped or well prepared to actually take those particular actions. It's almost as if we see something coming to an end, but we feel like as long as we don't say that we see it coming to an end, that it actually won't end. Now, again, the North Node and Aries energy trying to get us on the right path, which requires us to be independent, requires us to be on a solo quest, a solo adventure, if you will, to do what we have to do in order to get to know ourselves again. This is an element where, again, some of the relationship dynamics that we've been involved in have become a little bit codependent, a little bit too attached, if you will. And it's these particular relationship dynamics that are not allowing us to be ourselves, to do what we need to do in order for us to grow and evolve as individuals. The moon is then going to make a very tough interaction with the sun. The sun, of course, in the final degrees of the Gemini energy. The moon and the sun coming together in any kind of interaction is going to illuminate a new aha moment, a new emotional awareness of what we want, what we need, what we desire. The moon in Scorpio, again, willing to do the tough things, the hard things in order for a major change, a major transformation to actually take place, to stabilize our inner realm of emotion. The sun shining a bright light in this Gemini energy, again, furthers to illuminate the divide the choice points, the options. And basically it's, are we gonna to continue to do what it is that we've been doing and get what it is that we've already got? Or are we willing to do different and therefore create different, therefore receive different? The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Mercury now in Cancer Energy. This is our heart space, the moon, and our head space, Mercury, working together. Of course, they're both in water energies. Water energy is very emotional, very intuitive, very healing, very cleansing, very purifying, and also super transformative. So there's a major change, a major shift, not only in our inner realm of the inner dialogue and narrative in which we're speaking to ourselves, but there's a shift in our ability to see where it is that we are holding on to dear life, to something that is not encouraging, not supporting us, Therefore, we're flipping the script, we're building ourselves up, and we're trying to hype ourselves into this new quest, this new adventure. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer in this Aries energy. This is a powerhouse energy. We are building ourselves up. We are in a new placement of power, a new placement of control over our thoughts, over our emotions. We understand that moving into this new version of self is scary. We understand that breaking away from the same old, same old is scary, but we're also rising to the challenge. We are also feeling a lot more confident, a more well-equipped, more prepared to do the hard things that really need to be done in order to set ourselves free. Mercury is then going to interact with Chiron. So again, like I mentioned, the two aspects that don't involve the moon involve Mercury, who is about to give up his rulership over the Gemini energy. Mercury interacting with Chiron in this way is kind of building up a happier, healthier, more encouraging, more supportive narrative on who it is that we now are, who it is that we have become, what it is that we are confidently releasing to the past, to the old version of self, to the old realm of reality. And we are confidently building ourselves up in our inner narrative, in our understanding, in our perception of the options that we now have available to us to really give the power to the new version of self. This is not the wounded part of self. This is the healed part of self. And the healed part of self 
is in alignment with the higher version of ourselves. So we're listening to our heart space, we're listening to our intuition, and this is essentially giving us the guidance needed at this particular point to break away from the old and to start making progress towards the new. The moon in Scorpio energy is going to have its last interaction here with Neptune in its place power in Pisces energy before going void, of course. This is a trine. We have water on water energies and actions. This is renewing our soul and our spirit, reminding us of the goal, of the vision, of the dream that we want to do, that we want to pursue. This is reminding us that we are powerful, that we are on the right path, that we are following the path of our soul's intentions. We have to reach a new level of potential. This is kind of peeling back the layers of the confusion, the fog that we've been sitting in. This is peeling back the layers of the wounds, of the pain, of the trauma that we've been sitting in. And this is us emerging as the butterfly version of self, really ready to do what needs to be done to break free of the realm, reality, situation, and circumstances that have been holding us back, keeping us in that caterpillar state. It is at this point, 12.20 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that the moon is going to go void, of course. We lock into that Sag energy at 12.32 p.m. So the moon in Sag is standing in a new truth, standing in a new perspective, standing on a new path. We are starting to understand the bigger, broader picture. We start kind of building ourselves up in optimism and in confidence. It is a scatterbrain type of energy. Our attention is definitely being pulled in all kinds of different directions, but we're, reno we're renewed in our hopes, in our faith, in our dreams, in our visions, in our goals. So we lock in to that Sag energy at 12.32 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 3.32 p.m. We have the very first aspect with the moon and Sag, which happens to be a sextile, beautiful interaction with Pluto, the great transformer himself, retrograde in this Aquarius energy. So this is going to be a good energy shift. Emotionally speaking, we're thinking about the changes that we're essentially being pu pushed into and semi forced into making, but we're building confidence in that we're understanding that the power struggle that we've been kind of sitting in the back and forth, either within ourselves or with other people is coming to an end. We understand that that particular power struggle has given us the opportunity to grow, to heal, to evolve, to get to know thyself, to dream a bigger dream, to understand where it is that we've made choices in the past that have limited us in our ability to actually be thyself. And so, yes, this is an intense energy, but it comes with a lot of excitement, a lot of inspiration, a lot of renewal energy, which of course we all need on these final hours of this Gemini season. The moon and Sag is then going to make a very tough interaction with Venus. Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money. She's fresh in this cancer energy, fire energy, and cancer energy. Well, you know, the fire from Sag, the water from cancer. It's a tough vibe. Why? Because this is a tough interaction. We're not feeling in our emotional realm like we are ready to let go of certain people, certain circumstances, certain situations. Again, that cancer energy very attached to the past. The moon, on the other hand, in Sag energy is thinking about the future, wants to build a better vision, better goal, better dream for the future than our old version of self ever had. So the conflict between, again, projecting ourselves too far into the future and realizing the hard parts that we have to do in the present moment to let go of the past, that is the conflict that we're currently dealing with in our heart space. Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information communication, how it is that we express ourselves, fresh in this cancer energy, is going to make a beautiful interaction with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings. Jupiter's in this Gemini energy now, trying to grow and expand our mental plane, trying to push the boundaries of our thoughts, of our ideas, of our understanding. Now, granted, this particular energy is likely going to trigger and activate some 
indecision within us. But, you know, the Gemini energy, we're back, we're forth, we're pro, we're con, we're up, we're down anyways, in order to find that common middle ground. Because Mercury is in Cancer energy, we're blending our intellect with our intuition. But the beautiful thing is, is that Jupiter brings an element of optimism, a positivity that we just can't ignore. So yes, there are situations and circumstances popping off right now that is bringing a huge amount of disappointment. However, this particular interaction is kind of not allowing us to sit in the funk, not allowing us to sit in the disappointment for too long. We're able to flip the script. We're able to override a lot of those negative narratives in a very quick, very timely fashion. This is again going to amplify our headspace, our heart space, and really give us the opportunity to either double down on sitting in the negativity or really double down on building ourselves up into something a little bit better, a little bit more positive. The moon is going to sit across from directly oppose Jupiter. Again, the moon in Sag, Sag energy, Gemini energy, sit across from each other in the zodiac wheel. They represent the axis of what I know to be true versus what I believe to be true. This particular interaction is definitely going to create some tensions because again, the moon in Sag, thinking more futuristically than about the present moment, while Jupiter, the great expander of our lives, the most beneficial planet that we have kind of backing us up here, stuck in this Gemini energy that is very attached to this present moment, bringing in the evidence, the facts, the data of our materialistic realms and that is what we're using to actually formulate a path, a plan, a strategy on. The moon and Sag, this is hopes, wishes, and dreams. It has nothing to do with what is going on in this present moment because we know, a part of us knows anyways, that as long as we have a vision, a goal, a dream for the future, we're able to break away from these current circumstances. This is an energy though where, again, Jupiter tends to magnify really turn the volume all the way up on whatever it is that we're thinking and feeling. So be very cautiously aware to not find yourself in situations and, and commit to things that you actually don't want to commit to or are not prepared to commit to. There's this overzealous energy that kind of takes over where Jupiter's involved. And we tend to kind of be a little bit dramatic, a little bit extra, and tend to over-exaggerate, over-commit, and really put ourselves in situations that our future self is going to need to get out of. So just be very cautiously aware of how much you are kind of committing to in this present moment, because things are about to take a very dramatic turn. The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in this Sag energy making a very tough interaction with Mercury in this Cancer energy. So our heart and our head are not on the same page. Good reasoning for that. The Sag energy is thinking about the future. The Cancer energy that Mercury's in is thinking about the past. Emotionally speaking, we want to try and conjure up a new goal, new vision, new dream, new path, new plan, new strategy for our future selves. But the truth of the matter is, is that we have a lot of endings, closures, finalities to actually create in this present moment to close the door on the past, to free us up, to actually start making some progress towards the futuristic goals, visions, and dreams that we're currently trying to visualize in our mind's eye. So emotionally speaking, we are not here. We are in the future. But mentally speaking, we're also not here. We're stuck in the past. <laughs>